Hello and welcome. In the first part of this uh, video, I set up a GCMS. After many hours of struggle, I finally got it to work and tuned. So I immediately started to analyze anything I could get my hands on, like gasoline, toxic plants, foods and drinks, etc. I was only interested in qualifying what I found, and the mass spectrometers allows me to bypass the need for a standard, which is really great. Before I move on, just a quick trick I learned recently, if I'm looking for a specific compound, after an analysis and without the same feature, I can select the chromatogram and access the range. The software allows you to select the mass range you are interested in. For example, here benzene in the gasoline at mass 78. There it is, pre-selected in the chromatogram. I think it's very cool. Speaking of benzene, I wanted to demonstrate the nitration ratio quantitatively. So I set up a round bottom flask with a bit of sulfuric and nitric acid to which I added a small amount of benzene. I left it to react at room temperature for a few minutes before adding cold water. I extracted the organic phase using DCM and here's the results on the GCMS. There is still a very small amount of uh, unreacted benzene here. The very large hump here is our main product, nitrobenzene. But there is also some side reaction happening. The meta-dinitrobenzene was formed along with the ortho and para-dinitrobenzene. Now I can look at the total ion count and calculate the percentage of formation for each side products and confirm the theoretical expected value for electrophilic substitution. Nice. Another interesting addition reaction is the bromobenzene synthesis from bromine and benzene using iron like this. So I made a bit of bromine first, displacing it from sodium bromide with chlorine. My bromine is then slowly added to room temperature benzene in the presence of some iron. The reaction is exothermic and released a lot of hydrogen bromide fumes, so I'm glad I did it in my garage. Bromobenzene is this large peak here, but if I zoom in on the uh, low level down there, there is also some tribromomethane. I don't know if bromide is capable of completely destroying a benzene ring or if some uh, acetone contamination resulted in this side product. Uh, let me know in the comment if you have any idea. Now, because I use chlorine to displace bromine, and since the two are always contaminating each other, a few chlorinated molecules like this one are present as well. I also found some traces of bromoheptane and benzyl bromide. The interesting thing about bromine is the two isotopes in almost equal quantity, bromine 79 and bromine 81, which gives this double mass for every brominated compound, like the ultimate fingerprint. Speaking of uh, forensic, let's take a look at a major application of this analytical power with a real-world example, the alcohol level in a human subject. Yes, that's right. And for that, I need a volunteer. All right. Uh, thank you all for coming. I need a, a volunteer to donate uh, some blood for a video. Yeah. Oh, and you have to get drunk. Me, me, pick me, pick me, me, all me. Right. All right, you with the uh, no problem shirt, come on. I'm still drunk from last night. Because the GCMS is not a portable instrument, I kept track of the blood alcohol content with this breathalyzer for convenience. Not sure how accurate it really is, but I carefully measure how much fun juice I ingested and try to recover and calculate the blood alcohol content and compare it with the breathalyzer. As easy as this is to get a rough idea of the level of intoxication, the GCMS can directly quantify how much ethanol is in the bloodstream. But of course, that requires a blood sample. There is many creative and original ways to collect blood for this experiment, but I choose to call a real professional. Another option would be to collect some urine, but I'm not a fan of handling large quantity of the yellow stuff, especially when buzzed. I basically follow the forensic headspace method easily found online. For example, this standard operating procedure from the Wilmington Police Department Crime Lab. Because this number carries enormous legal consequences, and since law enforcement and the justice system never ever make any mistakes, this analysis has to be done correctly. My blood sample is uh, first heated to 80 degrees for 15 minutes, and a 100 microliter sample of the air above the blood in the headspace is collected and injected in the GCMS. I can again look at the total ion count. Earlier, I prepared three different concentrations of ethanol in methanol. A sober Monday morning for the blank, a good times at 0.05%, the I don't feel so good for the 0.1%, and the funeral for the 0.5%. Each can be analyzed for ethanol using the same option for mass 45, 46, and 47 only. The results are plotted here, 
that my blood samples came up to about 500,000 counts for a total sample of 30 milliliters of blood. According to this calibration curve, that puts my BAC at that moment at about 0.1. At this time, the BAC indicated by the breathalyzer was between 0.08 and 0.1%. To compare everything on equal basis, I kept a record of my funny afternoon every 30 minutes so I could get a curve where I can pinpoint the blood drawing time right here. This curve looks suspiciously like the half-life of radioisotopes. The alcohol half-life can be estimated on the curve like so or directly calculated from the exponential equation in green here. And we get a half-life of about three and a half hours, which makes alcohol the polonium-204 of the body. Let's use uh, three and a half hours. Now we can calculate the uh, drunkenness decay constant like uh, we normally would for radioactive decay. This constant is the rate of blood alcohol decrease per unit of time. And with it, I can estimate the level of alcohol at any time, assuming, of course, there is no more drinking. Using the carbon dating equation, I can calculate at what time I will be able to legally drive, and it looks like about five hours. Yeah, right. In this context, the specific activity could be thought of as the amount of liquor I can drink to bring my blood alcohol to whatever level I want. Well, theoretically at least. Mm, lots of nerdy stuff here. Because everyone processes alcohol differently, these values only work for me at this point in time. It was fun and interesting, but I'm not sure how much I trust these uh, cheap breathalyzers, honestly. So there's probably a wide margin of error somewhere. I was uh, just happy to see ethanol picked up by the GCMS from my blood in quantity that makes sense. Now, since we're having a good time, let's take a quick look at tobacco. I use some of these leaves with the same DCM extraction as before and concentration. Nicotine is here. Perfect. Some sorbic acid too, right here. And propylene glycol both used extensively in the food industry. Same restricting library problem, many other chemicals I could not identify with certainty. Finally, it's not a bad idea to get certain part of your anatomy checked after a certain age. On August 6th, I underwent anesthesia for that procedure. YouTube and the IRS are not the only one to shove it up my ass. This sedation is done with the injection of propofol, which looks like this. It can then remain in the body for 24 hours and is eliminated by the urine. So obviously, I extracted it and analyzed it. But I'm uh, sober this time. The big one here is the uh, phthalate from the injection septum slowly degrading. So don't pay attention to that. A lot of uh, organic acids and maybe some traces of vitamin A. As before, if I look for masses 173 and 178 for the mass range, I do get a hit for propofol eight hours after waking up. Great stuff. In retrospect, this was a very interesting project with an amazing instrument. I was able to detect many chemicals in high, low, and very low concentration from a wide variety of substances. If you feel like I missed something or did it incorrectly, let me know in the comment. So, this is probably not your first YouTube video and you know what to do. Thumbs up if you like it, subscribe if you want, Patreon, bell, share. I hope to see you again on the next one and thank you for watching. Damn it!